Die is one of a series of four short films, each featuring a craftsperson demonstrating a skill from the medieval period. Each film is named for the material in use – wood, dye, cloth and leather. The films have been produced for Hull and East Riding Museum, made possible through funding from Arts Council England. In each film, the craftsperson is working outdoors in a small tent, the interior of which has been patterned as cream brickwork, decorated with a flower motif in brown. A small arched window has been painted on the left rear wall, with a view of clouds against a blue sky. The craftsperson's tools are laid out on a long wooden bench on the right of the tent. The front of the tent is held open with tasseled ropes. The craftsperson featured here is Alison, a woman in her fifties, of medium height with a round face. Her hair is hidden under a white wimple cap with a rolled brim. She wears a simple grey woolen dress with a laced bodice over a white linen blouse. She has a leather belt around her waist and a white apron covering her skirt. Medieval Dyeing Using Madder Plant Roots On a table are two square wooden dishes which hold a tangle of roughly chopped brown roots. This is madder. Two madder plants with long oval green leaves grow in earthenware pots. Alison sorts and cuts the roots, choosing the largest and slicing them with a small knife. She discards the thin, fibrous pieces. A madder plant needs to be three to five years old to produce good dye. This plant was not particularly old, so the dye will not be first quality. This means it would fetch less money. A round metal pan sits on a grill over smouldering grey charcoal. Vapour rises from the brown liquid inside. Alison stirs the pan with a wooden stick. A mordant will be added to the dye to help it bind to the fibres of the yarn. The most common mordants were alum and iron. Alum was imported. Iron could be taken from an iron cauldron but dulls the colour, which is why Alison uses a brass cauldron. She drops a bundle of fluffy white fibres into it. This is aged wool. She does not stir it because the fibres will mat, but gently pokes the wool beneath the surface. The wool will remain in the dye bath for hours or even days, being kept warm over the charcoal as it takes on the colour from the root. Alison feeds a few twigs into the burner, but it is important not to boil the dye or the colour will dull. It should stay around body temperature. Alison hooks a loop of yarn out of the pan. It is a bright tangerine orange. She takes it in her hands and gently squeezes out the excess dye. She rinses the yarn in a smaller pan of soapy water on the ground. She wrings it out before placing it on a board to dry. On the board is one pile of orange dyed yarn and another of slightly more vibrant unspun wool. Pits of madder root were found at an archaeological dig at Eastgate in Beverley. They still bleed red dye when it rains. <laughs>